praise the Lord, everyone. I ask if you could please silence your cell phones at this time. We're going to close the casket so we can begin the service, and then we will reopen the casket after the service is done. Thank you.
if there's not enough programs to go around, there's a QR code scan on inside the vestibule. You're welcome to scan it and you will be able to access the program. Will everyone please take your seats so we can start the service? Thank you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Brother Xander was a believer. And one thing we remember him for is that great hallelujah that he always echoed throughout this church, this hallelujah. Amen. 
So we know that we are here at the funeral service, but as believers, we know that this is not the last time we're going to see our brother Xander. Amen? And we know he lived the kind of life that one day we will see him again. So we are here to celebrate his life, a life that was well lived. Amen? So we encourage everyone to please stand at this time. This is something that our brother Xander was able to say. He was able to say, it is well with my soul. And it's our hope today, our, our prayer, that by the end of this service that everyone in here will be able to say it as well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way
Hallelujah. We welcome your presence in this place tonight, Jesus. I pray, Almighty God, that you will saturate this whole place tonight, Lord. Every pew, oh God, I pray that you will saturate it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will fill every heart in this room tonight, Jesus, and those that are on Zoom and on, on, on YouTube, Lord. I pray, Almighty God, that you will just saturate this place in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Almighty God, as, as we come together to celebrate the life of our brother Xander Lenford, King Williams. I pray something will happen in this place tonight, Jesus. I don't know what you're about to do, oh God, but I know everything that you do is well in the mighty name of Jesus. So I pray tonight, oh God, and as we sing your songs of Zion tonight, Lord, as we lift up a praise in this, this room to you, Jesus, I pray, almighty God, that it will fall on receptive hearts. I pray, almighty God, that you will turn someone's life around in the the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Almighty God, that the world that will come forth, Lord, will turn hearts yes. to you tonight, Jesus, because you are the way, the truth, and the life. And it is in you, God, that we move and have our being. So we thank you tonight, Lord, for what you are about to do in this place. We give you praise tonight, Jesus, and we say, Almighty God, just have your divine way tonight. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Please turn your Bibles to Psalm 90, and at this time we will have Giovanni Britton come to read this evening's scripture reading. You have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight, and like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath, we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason or strength, they are 80 years yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And have compassion on your servants. O satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have aff afflicted us and the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and yet and your glory to the children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands of us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. only imagine what that day will be like when we meet our blessed Savior. Amen? Praise God. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Oh, I can only imagine. I can only I can only imagine, I can only imagine when that day comes, when that day comes, and I find my 
So we know that you want to speak. Amen. The floor is open at this time. Praise God. Hello. Hello. Good evening, everybody. So my name is on Junior, Xander's firstborn, I mean firstborn son, excuse me, excuse me. Um, I'm going to just give a quick reflection, I'll make it short and sweet. I mean, if I could become half the man he was, I'd be satisfied with that. Not only was he, his, not only was he a provider, he was a teacher, he made a way for his, his and his own to never need without, he was a great man, he was, he was, if he ain't the best man I know, he, matter of fact, he is the best man I know. You know, he is. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's still, it's still, it's still a surreal feeling. I, I can't even believe that he's not here. Because, like, it felt like he was just here yesterday with us. But, I mean, we lost a great man, but we gained the angel. I'll forever love you. All right, Daddy.
Any more reflections? Amen. Let's keep them moving. We don't want to waste the time waiting. Amen? Praise God. If you have a reflection, please come up at this time. Reflection, remarks. The floor is open at this time. You hear me? <laughs> Sorry. Um, this is just on behalf of his um, sisters, brothers, and everybody back home that's watching. Um, you know, he was the, what you may call it, the pedophilia of the Williams family for a long time. He was the one that everybody looked up to, and he had a say in a lot of the, the decisions that were made and everything like that. I know him and my uncle, uh, Jeriza, they were like, Bud and Lou, they were like tight. And he's beside himself. He's somewhere making a fool out of himself. I don't know where he at. Um, <clears throat> and he's gonna be missed. I remember as a little girl, as a baby, as a matter of fact, because he came away before I was even, you know. Um, and he was the first one to bought me, you know, to buy me a, uh, a chain and everything like that. I just have fun memories of him. And he's gonna be missed. And um, to the immediate family, the grieving family, I mean, it's all love, we love you. And just keep the memories alive. And again, thanks to everyone for coming out. Amen. Amen. Don't be shy, we're giving you an opportunity, amen. Another time to honor him, amen. If you have any reflections. Good evening, everybody. My name is Gracelyn Ralph. I'm from the same village as Xander. We knew him as Xander. Um, growing up, he taught all of us. <laughs> so I had to be here to show my respects. And for the past, what, couple months, we were trying to find a way to get to see him when he was in the hospital. Uh, my sister came from California, specifically to see him, but when we got there, it was too early, and we had another function to go to, so we did not see him, and to this day, she is really, 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 really regretful that we did not make the time that day to come back and see him, but I bring condolences from her and from the entire Ralph family, and on behalf of the Pereiras as well, my condolences to, to everybody who is grieving. We all are grieving because he was such a great person. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good afternoon. My name is Joshua Green. Um, Zander know me as Brother Green. He's a good friend of mine. We, the Bible, not, we, uh, men's choir, we had the men's choir. Every Monday afternoon, we have it to men's choir. Sometimes I come to the choir, I get here, there's no Xander here. So I pick up my phone and I call, Xander, you come to the choir rehearsal? He said, yes, I just park in my truck, I'll be there in a few minutes. Then a few minutes, he, sh he shows up. Then he started to talk about his, his day, how his day was. And the last thing he said, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. That's good. Yeah. So I really miss you, Zander. Uh, my condolences to the family. Amen. Right. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Jamal. Um, to Brother Zander, I was deacon. You know, Every time he greeted me, he had that big smile on his face mm -hmm. with a lean back and a shaking of the hand. Mm -hmm. um, Brother Zander wasn't 
just uh, any regular member of this ministry. Brother Zando was a member of the men's choir. He was a member of the men's department, and he was on the usher and security team. And Brother Zando took his job very seriously. Amen. Um, he will truly be missed in this ministry. Uh, and he took his, his roles, every single role, very seriously. Even his baritone voice, when he will come up and give his testimonies or say a prayer, He would greet the church. Good evening, church. I can't even do it, but you guys know Xander. Mm -hmm. But um, that baritone voice it will be missed in this mm -hmm. sanctuary. Amen. But we know that the heavens gained a choir member. Amen. And we know he's going to sing songs of Zion Amen. for life everlasting. We want to thank you for lending our brother to us while he was here. And we pray that... Uh, that we will get to see him very soon, in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Joel, and um, Brother Xander would call me Deacon Higgins. Um, I can remember some years ago when my wife and myself bought our house, and um, Brother Xander helped us move, and he didn't even ask for any money. I mean, we gave him money, but he didn't ask for anything. And, and he stayed with us, and he helped us set up our furniture and had a pleasant smile on his face the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, whenever Brother Xander greeted me, it was always pleasant, and it was always a word of encouragement. Um, Brother Xander was really an encourager. Like, he wasn't loud with it and just out in front with it, but he would pull you to the side and really let you know that whatever you did meant something to him. Whatever you did or said encouraged him. The prayer that you said, you know, really inspired him. And I will miss that about Brother Xander. I will miss his pleasant smile. I will miss his baritone voice. I will miss his place in our men's choir because he really held our choir together with his baritone voice and just with his jubilance, just with his jubilance. And we'll miss that in our ministry. And to the family, I just want to say that um, Brother Xander really cared about each and every one of you guys. You were always on his lips. He always talked about all of you guys. And he wants to see you guys in the ministry. He wants to see you guys in a church somewhere. Um, he wants to see you guys serving God. Amen. So if there's anything you take with you when you leave here, take that fact that he always spoke well of you guys, that he really loved you guys, yes, he and he wants to see you again where he is. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. My condolences to the Williams family, <coughs> the well wishes, and the church family. Praise God. The word of God said, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Brother Sander and I were the only Vincentian, along with Sister Yvonne at the time in this church. And we had a beautiful relationship. And anything was going on in St. Vincent, he will let me know. Evangelist Green, this is what's happening. And when he came back, he said to me, girl, I had such a wonderful time. And I want to go back. I said, okay, Brother Zander. And he was always willing and ready to share, to give a willing hand in this church. And also, I can remember when we just bought our home. <coughs> I had some construction doing, and I called Brother Zander. And he said, Gus, don't worry. I'll take everything. You don't have to pay this big set of money. I will do it. And he did it with a willing heart. He was caring. He had that love and, and that compassion in his heart for the members. And he loves his family. Zander, he said, I want them to be in the house of the Lord, as, as Brother said before. And I know. There is hope beyond the grave for Brother Sander. He's going to be with the Lord. Don't weep for him. All those who are left behind, whether friends or family, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, try him. Right now, try him. Hallelujah. Because we know when our time is ended, we want to see a Savior. Amen. God bless you. 
and be strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you drive cars with the license plate number CYP8717, if that's your license plate number, CYP8717, or MFL9902, please go move your car at this time. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Jason. I'm Zonda's second son. And like my brother Junior had said, to be even half the man he was would be a blessing. Um, he was always there for me, always a provider, really big family man. And to, I don't think I could even thank him for everything he's done for me. Um, that's really it. Thank you. Amen. If you want to come up after her, please stand right here in the middle, or else we're closing off the reflections. Amen? Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. The Bible said, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And this is, I'm telling you, Brother Zander and I were buddies. We were the best of friends. And he gave the best hugs. He... I mean, he hugged me so tight that I used to feel so happy after, after letting him go. I said to him, I love you. And he would say, I love you too, Clary. <laughs> <laughs> and then when, when we were about to move from off of Van Buren Street to Kadassi Avenue, it was Brother Zander who helped us to move. Amen. And when... I was sad about leaving. And he, he said, me, don't worry, Clary. It's a brand new day for you. Amen. It's a brand new start for you. And he was encouraging me. And he was just making me laugh all the way to the all the way to packing the, the boxes on the trucks and the heavy loads that I was taking down the stairs. He took them all for me. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna miss him badly. He left a hole in my heart. And I hope to God that one day, when my eyes close, we will meet. Amen, amen, amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. My name is Sister Yvonne, as Sister um, Evangelist Green said, that we were the only three Vincent in here. But I want to say, Brother Zander moved me from up at Fulton <laughs> to, to from Fulton to Bergen. And Brother, Brother Zander, um, pan, on church evening when I'm going home and he see me coming, he would run because I walk with a cane and I would hit him with the cane. Mm -hmm. And he tell he would tell Brother Green, watch Sister Yvonne, watch her, watch where she come in. And sometimes I don't want to bother him, but because he said it, I will hit him with the cane. But Zander, Brother Zander was a man of his word. If he tell you he's coming nine o'clock, nine o'clock he would be there. He was a man of his word. And I just want to say to the entire family, my condolence to you. Amen. And I know you all are grieving, but he is in a right place. Amen. He is in a right place because Brother Zander don't play in church. He don't play. When he come to church, he come to Sunday school, he sit in the front row. He don't sit in the back. He sit in the front row. And I just want to say my condolence to you all. And he loved church, and I wish you all would join behind him. Thank you. Amen. Pleasant, blessed, good evening to everyone. I am Bishop Theodosia, and I'm also better known as Mother T. Um, when I first met Mr. Zander, is I was working as assistant principal of guidance at the high school where Hazon 
Xander, Zandra, Xander, Danda, Danda, Danda. And <laughs> when they when they when they came um, for registration and, and writing up the names, I was like, I was asking my assistant, I was like, wait a minute, how many times is this person, you know, being registered for school? Is Xandra, Xander, Zandra, Zandria? And I was like, why are you writing it up so many times? And then they were like, no. Uh, uh, he said, no, it's different people. But anyway, um, I, I, it, um, Hazon was at the same age as my oldest daughter that was at the school, and so we became close. And also, I had my youth organization. So on Fridays after school, instead of them going and hanging out in the street, I would bring them to the church. We would do prayers. We would sing songs. And we would teach them how to interact with each other and once a month we would go out to dinner or different activities and things. However, whenever the youth meeting was finished and everybody was supposed to go home, nobody wanted to go home. So everybody used to end up at my house and now it's like seven o'clock, but it's a Friday. Seven o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night, so I'm like, call your parents, call your parents, call your parents, let them know where you are. So sometime it was getting to be midnight and Mrs. Zander would call and he'd be like, Where's Hazon? I was like, um, in one of these rooms, you, you need her? And he was like, why is she there, still there so late? And I was like, I don't know. I've been trying to send everybody's children home, but they just won't go home. So one night, he came over. And when he came over and he opened the door and he saw everybody in there, he saw the love. We had them singing. We had them praying. We had them praising. And I think that's when his heart changed and he, you know, turned and he understood exactly what we were doing and who we were. And um, I remember when my friend went to St. Vincent, or sent to St. Vincent, and he got something called Chi-Chi Fish or something like that. And, and that Friday, he was cooking pilau. And every Friday after that, Hazan would be like, Mother T, is, are we going to have pilau? Are we going to have Chi-Chi Fish? So that's, that's, that's the joy that I remember with him. He fussed at first, but then after he saw truly who I was and what I was about, he had no problems with it. And God bless you all. I, I love you all. I cannot believe this young man sitting here because I think the last time I saw him, he was probably like Amen. this. But to God be the glory, great Amen. things he has done. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Thank you, everyone, for those wonderful reflections. And we know that he was truly a wonderful man with such a sweet calm, loving spirit. And as you heard from so many people, he helped so many people over the years. And he was such a blessing to so many people. Amen. While he lived. And I know that he is leaving a legacy behind tonight. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Can you please stand with us? My life is in your hands. That's one of the songs that our brother Xander liked. And his life was truly in God's hands. And as we heard, we know that he's in a better place tonight. No more sickness, no more pain. And he wants us to know that we don't have to worry because our life is in God's hands. Praise God. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles they don't last always For there's a friend named Jesus Who will wipe your tears away And if your heart is broken Just lift your hands and say You don't have to worry, oh, and don't you be afraid, when joy comes in the morning, and troubles they don't last always, and for there's a friend named Jesus, who will wipe your tears away. Which 
Jesus, I can take it. With him I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. So when your tests and trials, they seem to get you down. Your friends and loved ones, they are no way to be found. Remember there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, oh, I know. Jesus, I can take it. With him I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way. Yes, my life is in your hands. Oh, I know, I know that I can make it. Oh, and I know, I know. God, praise God. Let us bow our heads as I offer a prayer to God for comfort this afternoon. Father, we thank you because we are here in this sanctuary to celebrate our brother. We thank you, O oh God, for the friends and families that are gathered here this afternoon. We reminded in your word, God, that you say it is a time to laugh and it's a time to cry. And Father, as we know that tears will be shed. We ask thee right now that you will comfort hearts, God. I pray, mighty God, that you will remind them that you are God and that you are able to keep, you are able to sustain, you are able to satisfy. So we pray, oh God, for comfort for the family, for the children this afternoon, for the grandchildren, for the wife, for aunts, for uncles, for niece, oh God, and for friends that are gathered here. We see the love for our brother this afternoon. So God, I pray that in the time of trouble, in the time of testing, in the time where they try to remember the good things about him, oh God, and tell will come, that they will look to the hills from which cometh their help, because we know that our help cometh from you. So comfort their hearts right now. Father, we commit them into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. And please have your seat at this time as Sherma King Alsop comes to read the obituary. You can come up. You can, you can come up. Oh. I greet everyone in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. I give honor to God, who is the head of my life. My condolences to Sandra and my close cousins who... I probably haven't met you guys in a long, long time, and I hope to do some catching up now. So I was given the task to read, and I'm honored to read it, the obituaries for my uncle. Uh, Xander Lenot Lenford King Williams Sr. Xander Lenford King Williams was born in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on December 6th. 1954, to Ona Williams and Clement King. He attended the South Rivers Methodist School and after passing the school leaving exam, 
he became a teacher at the above mentioned school. Zander, who was also known as King O, went to become a police officer and was later promoted to a detective. This is new to me. <laughs> Zander migrated in, to the US in 1985. When he arrived, he worked at a car wash for a short time. He later went on to become an independent contractor in the trucking business with his own business name, Zander's Trucking. That's how I knew my uncle, always trying to lend a hand with his business, and I heard it all by the testimonies and everything that was given up. Because when I came up here in 89 and I needed someone to do any little thing for me, it, he was there. Even for my other cousins, he was there moving us or doing anything that he could to help us. And I thank him for that. Uh, when he arrived, he worked at a car wash, as I said, for a short time. He later went on to become an independent contractor in the trucking business with his own business named Zander's Trucking. He also DJed at, at various events with his longtime friend, Colin Jack, also known as Vood Fudu. <laughs> okay. Uh, Zander was a very active member in the Mount. Calvary Pentecostal Church of God in Brooklyn, New York. And I'm honored and delighted to know that my uncle was a part of the ministry. I'm delighted. So I am, and I'm for the family who do not have an active part or don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He is the only dad. He's the big daddy. Papa daddy, I call him. When friends forget you, relatives forget you, you could call on Papa Daddy. That's who I call on, Papa Daddy. So I was glad that I was able to spiritually speak to him mentally at that last moment. Didn't even know the time or the hour when he was going to be called home, but I knew the connection was there because the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I ran. I ran to see him. So I was honored. So we had that conversation, so rest assured he is in a, he's in the right place, and I know I'll see him in the next Jerusalem. To his dear friend, Ikea John was a great companion of him in his last days, including his brother, Victor. Xander leaves behind his wife, Sandra, his five children, Zandra, Zandria, Zander Jr., Zandra, and Jason, his four grandsons, Giovanni, Zion, Zachary, and Zemir. Zemir. Okay, all disease. <laughs> his son, his son-in-law, Ben, siblings, and many nieces and nephew. Xander had many friends and acquaintances, too numerous to mention, but he was well known and loved by many. He would be remembered as a strong, independent entrepreneur, and his bright smile may his soul rest in eternal peace. Yes, he will. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for that. And we ask you to stand with us one more time. Amen. As we sing this medley of choruses, and the next voice you will hear is that of our beloved pastor, Reverend Adrian A. Cox, as he delivers the eulogy. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How many of us know that there's gonna be a meeting in the air one of these great getting up mornings, amen? Right. Praise the Lord. You have heard of little Moses in the bulrush. You have heard of fearless David and his sling. You have heard the story told of dreaming Joseph. Jonah and the whale you do, you often sing. There are many, many others in the Bible. I'd love to meet them all, I do declare. By and by the Lord will let me them at that meeting in the air. Oh, 
there is going to be a meeting, a meeting in the air, in that sweet, 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 sweet by and by. Oh, and I'm going to meet you, meet you there, in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal air, but it's glorious I do declare. God's own son will be the leading one in that meeting in the air. Oh, there is going, there is going to be a meeting a in the air. A meeting in the air. In that sweet, sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet you, meet you there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing, such singing you will hear. Never heard by mortal air, will be glorious I do declare. And God's own son, and God's own son, he will be the leading one in that meeting in the air. Sing by and by, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how they overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Come on, lift your voice by and by. by and when, by. The morning comes, when the morning comes, when all the saints, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome. And we will understand it better by and by. Sing by and by, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints, Home. We will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. When I get there, when I get there, oh, when I get there, I will sing and shout. I will sing and shout. Oh, when I get there, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. When I get there, come on, if you know it, clap and sing with us. When I, when I get there, when. I will sing and shout when, when I get, get there. there. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. When, when I, I get there. When I get there. When I get there. When I get there. I will sing and shout. When I get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. When I When I get there, hallelujah, praise the Lord, when I get there. Oh, what singing, oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Oh, what oh, what's shouting? Oh, what's shouting? Oh, on that happy, happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Oh, what's singing? Oh, what's singing? Oh, what's shouting? On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Savior in the sky. Hallelujah. Glory. When I get there, when I get there, I will sing and shout. When I get there, 
Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. When I get there. Father, we thank you for bringing us to this moment in the service. We thank you, God, that our brother that's laying before us has made this encounter possible. For I believe that you've touched the lives of all those that are in the room. And God, I pray that something significant will happen today. That even in his departure, he would have granted those around a gift. Bless us, God, from your word. Let something from the pages of your word cause us to be a better people, a more loving people, a more committed people, a more spiritually adapt people. Oh, glory to God. Let something tonight transform our thought process that we would all know that there's an appointed time when we will be there where he is. And we have to make our calling an election sure. Bless us and make us a blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I certainly want to take this opportunity to extend my condolence to uh, Brother Zander's family. A lovely family. Amen. I, I can't believe how, how these kids have grown up. Y'all are giants. Amen. I, I just want to thank God that you're able to be here today to honor him and to salute him. Certainly, before I say anything from the word of God, I want to say that Brother Zander was not just a member of this church, but he was my friend. He was my very close friend. We spent a lot of time together. Brother Zander considered me his mentor. Brother Zander would always say, I wish I'd met you many years ago. I would have even been more of a champion. When people laugh at my money making and money saving techniques, Brother Zander embraced them. And Brother Zander testified about the fact that he listens to Pastor Cox, not just preaching the word of God, but as a businessman. And it has taken him leaps and bounds. I'm going to miss my friend. Amen. I said, I'm going to miss my friend. But I'm glad tonight that I can say something. You know, many times as pastors, we have to speak at funerals. And sometimes we have to speak over people we don't know. But it's refreshing to speak over someone that you do know. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I used to get that fish from St. Vincent. <laughs> that was my reward for keeping his truck. <laughs> he would bring me that roast breadfruit and that fish. And the last time he went back, he, he gave me all of the fish. He said, I think we burned them. I think they were overburned. I'm glad he thought so because the fish was great. <laughs> I called him up and said, these fish aren't burned. These are good. I got the whole bag. Amen. God is good. I said, God is good. You know, as you look at the program, you see that Brother, Brother Zander has, has a date, sunrise and a sunset. And each and every one of us have Two, two dates. We know the first date because we celebrate our birthdays. But we don't know the sunset. But what is significant is what we do between these two dates. And certainly we can see that our brother Zander did some things between these two dates because he had five children and a wife. <laughs> and because he did some things between these two dates, this world will never be the same. Had he never been born, you would never be here. And because you are here, it means that he has made an indelible change on the world. So it is up to you to carry on his legacy. He has done his part. But it is up to you to carry on his legacy. And as I'm looking at you, I know you. Even better than you know, I know you because I was his, his friend. And, you know, for all the sermons in the Bible, I said, well, what am I going to preach over our Brother Zander today? Because this sermon is certainly not for Brother Zander. It's for us. And I can go into all the sermons about death and resurrection and this and that. But the Lord wants me to just preach a simple sermon tonight letting you know that Jesus cares. Jesus cares. He's compassionate. He's concerned about us. He wants to make sure that our needs are met. 
And many of us, as we saw our brother Xander the last few months, you know, in the hospital suffering and really, really, we, we, we saw his body going from a strong body to a weaker body and we, we witnessed it with our own eyes. But, but, but I want to let you know that even in all of that, Jesus cared. Because he gave him that time that he needed. Oh, come on, somebody. I remember the first time Brother Zander was in the hospital laying there, and God raised him up out of the bed, and he came back, and he testified, and he was grateful that God gave him another chance. And as I heard, I heard um, the deacons testified, Brother Zander, the last thing he said to me was that he has a wish, a desire for his family, his entire family, to come together and get along and love each other. He went as far as saying he would even use his personal resources at the point, what we were discussing. He was willing to use his own money just to squash things to make sure that his family would get along. So not only does Jesus care, Brother Zander cared. And that's why I want to share this simple message. You may say it's not an appropriate message, but if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of St. Mark chapter 8. I'm just going to read the first nine verses, talk about it and get you out of this warm place. St. Mark chapter 8, verse 1 through 9. In those days, the multitude being very great, having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto them and said unto them, I have compassion on the multitude. Because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own house, houses, they will faint by the way. For divers of them came from far. And his disciples answered him, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and break and gave to his disciples to set before them. And they did set them before the people. And they had a few small fishes and he blessed and commanded to set them also before them. So they did eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about 4,000. And he sent them away. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the reading of the, your word. We pray, God, as your word is rightly divided, that it would enter into our hearts and it would make us a better people. In Jesus' name. Amen. This scripture seems very simple, but... As I was reading the scripture, I thought about this man, Christ Jesus. And I wonder what was there about Jesus that would cause 4,000 people, and here they're counting men, not women and children, to leave their personal agenda. To become not concerned about the location because they're following him from wherever they are into the wilderness. For three days, not be concerned about food. For three days, not be concerned about their home or their cell phone. For three days, not be concerned about time. Well, well look how much time I'm spending. Sometimes we keep people in church for three hours, they start to worry. They were not concerned about their personal agenda. So that tells me that there was something about this man, Jesus, that caused people to follow him. And you say, what's significant about that? Well, this man, Jesus, is still causing people to follow him today because there's something special about him. The disciples were very religious, but they weren't very concerned. And I want you to know that Jesus had the heart of a shepherd. Jesus loved people. And one thing about being a Christian is we are supposed to love people. I want to say that again. One thing about being a Christian is we are supposed to love people. 
Jesus said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you have love one for another. So if you're professing to be a Christian here today and you're having trouble loving people, then you're going to have a problem getting to heaven. I only got about three people clapping. That means only about three of you are going to make it. The rest of you are beginning to hate already. But Jesus said, Jesus wasn't concerned whether these people were black people or white people or rich people or poor people or whether they were old people or young people. What Jesus was concerned about is that they were following him for three days and they didn't have anything to eat. How many people know Jesus is concerned about our fears? He's not just some religious freak that just have his head in the cloud, but he's concerned about your sickness, your infirmities. Your disease, come on. He's concerned about when you have a bad day. He can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. So I know when my brother was grimacing in pain in that hospital bed that the Lord was right there carrying him through. When the medication couldn't do it, when the doctor said there's nothing more that we can do, the Lord was right there carrying him through because he's compassionate. I have compassion on the multitude. And sometimes we have a hard time loving people because we know stuff about people. But I love Jesus, even though he knows stuff about us. Even though he knows bad stuff about us. Uh, he still has compassion about Oh, come on, somebody. Don't just sit there like you're an angel. You, you've talked about somebody. You, you've stabbed some people in the back. Uh, come on, you've gossiped on some people. But Jesus still has compassion on you. You have trouble forgiving some people, but yet he's compassionate. Because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. Some of us don't even call up our relatives to see if they have a loaf of bread. Some of us have excess that we throw out and we don't think about giving to anybody else. Come on, somebody. We've just been through a tough time in COVID and many of us should have learned that that was a good time to learn how to share and get along with each other because life is short. Isn't it true? And, and you don't judge a person based on the abundance of what they have. It, it, it's based on what, what their heart is like. I'm going to take my time and preach this here today. Jesus recognized something also. He, he, he said, and his disciples answered him, listen, from whence can a man, I want you to underline that, from whence can a man, Satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness. Touch somebody and say, Jesus, Jesus. Was, more than was more than a man. He was the God man. And every once in a while we become very religious and go to church and we know all the songs. We can rehearse the Psalms. You know, we can say our Lord's Prayer. Come on now. We can put on all the church clothes and look very religious. But we don't have that relationship with the man Christ Jesus that we need to have. Because when we're going through, sometimes we reach back to the beggarly elements. Come on now. When we're going through our wilderness experience, sometimes we walk away from church. We walk away from God. And the disciples are asking a question. In other words, they were saying, this is an impossible task because we're out here in the wilderness. There ain't no bakeries out here. And even if there was a bakery, they can't bake enough bread for 4,000 people plus women and children. And even if they had such things, we are dead broke. We can't even afford to pay for it. Lord, have mercy. I just love when it looks like the, that, like the devil think that Jesus' back is against the wall. Come on, somebody. And it looked like, oh, oh, you got people following you for three days and think that you're somebody special? Now I got you set up. They're hungry now. What you going to do about it? Tell somebody, I don't care what you're going through. The God that we serve is able to supply all of our needs. <laughs> according to his riches and glory. Uh, uh, come on, somebody. Whether it's sickness, he's there. Uh, whether it's hunger, he's there. Uh, whether it's worries, he's there. Uh, he is a very present help in the time of trouble. And Jesus, he asked them, how many loaves of bread? I just love it when, when, when you're getting too, too big for your bridges and trying to tell Jesus how to do mathematics. 
and explain it to him that you have some culinary skills that he don't have. And Jesus said, well, how many loaves of bread do you have? Somebody said, that's a ridiculous question. Because if it's only 12 of us, how much loaves of bread do you think we can have? And, and, and they answered him to how many they said? Seven. Seven loaves of bread for 4,000 people? That wouldn't even stick in my teeth. <laughs> but I want you to know something. Your extremities becomes God's opportunity. When your resources are depleted, when, when, when it looks like everybody walk away from you and you're all alone and nobody cares about you, nobody calls you for your birthday, nobody remember you at Valentine's. Come on, somebody. Ah, uh, Christmas time, everybody's busy. Nobody have time for you. Jesus cares. He's compassionate. He can be touched. Come on, somebody. He loves you. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. I want you to know something that, that, that there comes a point in our lives where we need to recognize that we need help. One of the biggest problems we have as a people is that we don't acknowledge when we need help. They're finding out now how many people are suffering with mental problems. You're sitting on the train with people that dress nice, look nice, talk nice, but they're losing it here. This world needs help. There are people in this room that need help. There are people in this room that are suffering with anxiety. There are people in this room that are suffering with depression. There are people in this room that's battling with loneliness. There are people in this room that's battling with unforgiveness. There are people in this room that believe that, that, that they could have been better if somebody didn't keep them back. Inferiority complexes. There are people in this room that feel that there were short change in life. But I just came to let you know that that's a trick of the enemy. Because you were fearfully and wonderfully made. I want you to know that you are special. I want you to know that if you're part of the multitude, if God allow you to get here today to hear this word, it means there's still hope for you. There's still hope for me. Come on. There's room at the table for you. There's room at the table for me. Because he promised that even when you're going through the very shadow of death, uh, that you don't have to fear evil. Uh, because the Lord will be with you. He promised to prepare a table for you in the present. You're going to have some enemies. Don't worry about your enemies. God says, I'll prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And I'm going to anoint your head with oil. Your cup is going to run over. Do I have anybody in here that know God's been taking care of them? He says, when father and mother forsake you, and that's supposed to be the two closest people to you, your daddy and your mommy. But it comes a point in life sometimes when the people that you think are closest to you turn their back on you. Don't commit suicide. Uh, don't go jump off of a building. But you need to know that the Lord says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. When you're going through the waters, I'll be there. When you're going through the fire, I'll be there. Come on, somebody. He's a very present help. He's a compassionate Savior. Sit on the ground. Take a rest. And I believe what's beautiful about, about this service is that, that it gives us an opportunity to just take a rest and reflect on life. Why am I here? What is my purpose for being here? You, we heard everybody talked about this man. Obviously, he was a mover and shaker because he moved a lot of you. <laughs> right? But now it's time for you and I to ask a question, why am I here? What, what, what is my life supposed to, to, to mean in this, in this world? Because you could be a world changer. You could be someone that makes a difference in somebody else's life. So it's a time of reflection. Sit down. That's what Jesus tells him to do. Sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and he gave thanks. Who did he give thanks to? I want to let you know something. If you're ever going to have your needs met in this life, you need to have a relationship with God. If you need to get out of a hole, you need to have a relationship with God. If you need to get that monkey off your back, you need to have a relationship with God. Not a guru, not a palm reader, not some rich doctor, not some strange person. You need to have a relationship with God. 
Because sometimes life throws you some things that you can't help yourself. You have money, but you can't help yourself. You have influence, but you can't help yourself. You have fame, but you can't help yourself. And the only thing you can do is look to the hills from whence your help cometh. Because your help will come from the Lord. He gave thanks and he break and he gave it to his disciples to set before them. Somebody said, why do I need to listen to you? I don't need a pastor. I don't need a preacher. Why do I need to come join the church? I don't need no religious uh, person over me. But if you notice that after Jesus broke the loaves, he didn't give it to the people. He gave it to who? So it is my responsibility. It is Pastor Alexis' responsibility and the ministers of this church to feed God's people. Come on, somebody. And every time we stand here to preach from the word, it is us giving you some food to eat. You can, you can take it or you can spit it out, but I'm giving you some food to eat. And they did set them before the people. Tell somebody next to you, it is up to you to eat. There's food on the table. I came to let you know that God loves you, that Jesus cares about you. He's concerned about your hunger. He's concerned about your pain. He's concerned about your loneliness. He's concerned about all aspects of your life. But it's up to you to eat. And they had a few small fishes. So you see those disciples? You know what I love about some people? When they have, they don't care about nobody else. Them buggers had seven loaves and some fish. And it was enough for 12 of them. So they weren't worrying about 4,000. But I want you to know that if you really, really have a relationship with God, you care about people. You care about where they are. You care about what they're going through. Come on. And they had a few, uh, and so they did eat and were filled. And they took up the broken meat that was left, seven baskets. Now you say, you, you, you say, Pastor, where are you going with this? But when I got to verse 9, it says, and they that had eaten, tell somebody that's me, were about 4,000, and he sent them away. Why did he send them away now? Why didn't he send them away when the disciples said to send them away? Because Jesus, he says, listen, those that are the sick don't need a physician. He says, I came to call who? To seek and to save what? Those that are lost. So I want you to know that Jesus came here for people that had problems. If you don't have a problem, you don't need Jesus. If you never committed a sin, you don't need Jesus. But the Bible says all we like had gone. We had turned everyone to our own. But God laid on him the iniquity of us all. So I'm here to remind you tonight that if there's any sin in your life, if there's ever been any sin in your life, if you've ever done anything wrong in your life, there's only one person that God has laid your iniquity on that can remove your sin, and his name is Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. He's compassionate. He's caring. He's loving. But I saw the scripture in the spiritual light also. You say, well, 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 well what is the spiritual light you see this scripture in? Uh, I, I see Jesus as the bread of life. And as I told you, there had to be something special about him that would cause people to leave their homes and follow him for three, three days. Inside of each and every one of us, there is a spiritual void. Touch somebody and says, inside of you is a spiritual void. Alcohol can't fill it. Ganja can't fill it. Synthetic drugs can't fill it. I don't care what you try. Sex can't fill it. I don't care how beautiful she is. It can't fill it. Some of y'all ain't following me. Because the void is spiritual, it's not carnal, it's not material, it's not a man-made void. When God created us, he placed a void within us that belongs to him. And he says the only thing that can set, you, you, you ever been thirsty on a real hot day and somebody brought you Coca-Cola and it didn't do it? They brought you a Guinness and it didn't do it. 
They brought, brought you a bud and it didn't do it. And a miller and it didn't do it. And then somebody brought you a nice cool glass of water. And you say, ah, that's the drink that I wanted. Well, Jesus is that spring. Jesus is that, 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 that refresher. He says, come, come and, and, and draw from the well of life. Drink freely. And I'm here to let you know that if you taste and see that the Lord is good, that void within you will be satisfied. You may not have money, but you'll be happy. You may not find your husband yet, but you can be happy. Come on, somebody. Oh, you, may, you may not have a whole lot of friends, but you can be happy because there's a joy within you. I want you to know that happiness is not an external thing. Happiness is an internal thing. Huh? And once you have internal things in place, huh? once you have that relationship with God, come on, somebody. Once Jesus is the head of you, he says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Which means if you add all these things and forget Jesus, you're not going to be fulfilled. You're not going to be contented. You're not going to be happy. What shall it profit a man if he would gain this whole world and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? So I believe our brother Xander was one of these 4,000 people that left St. Vincent as a detective, as a police officer. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, as an immigration officer, all the different jobs that he had, and came to New York, and somebody said, you come to New York just to, to go and, and work in a car wash after being a big boy in your country, but you don't know that God was setting him up. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> We all got saved coming through different avenues. You didn't know that he had a thirst that those jobs didn't quench. But somehow, I think it was Sister Elsa that invited him to this church. Yeah, she's Bajan, but she's more Vincentian than any of you. Let's get this record straight. She's Vinci? Well, she, or she want to be a Bajan. Okay. Let me get that record straight. They just fixed me. Sister Elsa is Vinci, but why she like Bajan so much? <laughs> to the point where she built a house in Barbados, she's living and she's watching right now. But I want to big up our sister Elsa for bringing Brother Xander through these doors. Because from the time this man walked through these doors, he had a beautiful smile on his face. And don't think my little sister Claire is the only one in love with him. All the ladies in this church in love with Brother Xander. But they know hanky panky going on, so you don't have to worry. Because I believe that when he came to this church, he took a drink. Oh, come on, somebody. I said he took a drink, and he felt a joy that satisfied his soul. And once you get that drink and your soul is satisfied, everything in your life does not have to be perfect. But once you're calling, an election is sure. Once you know that absent from the body, present with the Lord. Uh, once you know that once this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, uh, that you have a building. Uh, you have a body not made with the hands of men, uh, eternal in the heavens. Then you can make it through anything. Amen. And I believe that even though he experienced what these people were experiencing, because Jesus cared about him. I believe he wrapped his arms around him. And he did not send him home until he fed him. I want to say that again. I said, I believe that Jesus did not send them home. Just like he didn't send these people home hungry. I believe that when he gave up that ghost. I believe that when he gave up that last breath. Yeah, it, it had to be painful. It had to be a hard thing to do. But I believe that he sensed that it was the end coming. Because I don't believe that God will, will let one of his servants be without a witness to know that it's time to come. But I learned something. I learned that life without God is not life anyway. So Jesus says, I am come that you may have and have it more of. So I believe that Brother Xander had life and he had abundant life. Uh-oh. All of us in here have life. But all of us in here don't have abundant life. So I'm just here stopping by a minute on this pulpit to just remind you that living is just existing. But having a relationship with Jesus Christ is true living. Amen. Amen. And if you want to experience a life beyond this life, taste and see. 
that the Lord is good. If you want to know that, listen, the Bible says, for we know that when this earthly tabernacle, I want everybody to touch themselves. Touch yourself. Don't worry. You can touch yourself in church. Touch yourself. <laughs> this body belongs to the ground. And it's going to go back there. But this body is not the full essence of who you are. You're a triune being. It's like an egg. You look at the egg, you see that nice yellow. The yolk, yes? Then you see the white. Then you see the shell. But all three components make up an egg. When the shell is thrown in the garbage, the egg isn't gone, is it? The shell is just gone. Huh? But the true taste is still there, isn't it? So this body is just a shell that houses us. But within this body is a spirit and a soul. And when this body goes back to the earth, God has a place of reservation for the soul of man. And he said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Oh, you're going to be a preacher. I'm claiming you in Jesus' name. Say hallelujah. <laughs> so, if you didn't get anything from this sermon, I want you to get the fact that each and every one of us have to give an account of our lives here. Brother Xander has done what he can do between those two dates. All of us standing here don't know what our ending date is going to be. But what we can do from here and now is to make sure that we live a life pleasing to God before that end date, that sunset. Amen? Amen. You didn't have any control about coming into this world. But now you're here. You have control as to how you will live in this world. Let's love one another. Let's care for one another. You know, when we were poor back in the islands, we, we took care of each other better. You know, we share resources better. You know, we were happier people. We didn't have a whole lot of money and a whole lot of Gucci and a whole lot of Prada and a whole lot of oh, all these bling bling that we have here. But we were happier people. We went to bed comfortable. We listened to crickets. We didn't listen to sirens. <laughs> crickets used to put me to sleep. Yeah, some of y'all don't even know what a cricket is. Quick, 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 quick. We were, we were awakened, not by gunshots, a cop, a a a And it was time to get up. Life was simple. Isn't it true? We didn't have any expensive cream to put on our foot. We get some lard. And the foot shine. And the ladies were more beautiful. I need another amen. Them women didn't need nothing fake to look good. They took some aloes and some crutching needle or whatever, washed their hair, and it worked for me. What I'm saying is life was simple. Life was simple. But people cared about each other. People knew how their neighbors were doing. When folks came to a funeral, they, they, they really knew the person. They really missed the person. Some of y'all ain't called Xander in 50 years. <laughs> but he ain't going to come back and punch you. You can come in here in your fine clothes and, <laughs> and say, let me look at him for the last. But this is not the last. Because the Bible says, for the trump of God shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the air. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. This mortal shall put on immortality. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Because our big brother Jesus Christ have taken the keys of death hell and the grave. Uh, he has led captivity captive. Uh, he has given gifts to men. Uh, and he's at our Father's right hand ever living to make intercession for us. Uh, and I'm just looking forward to that getting up morning uh, when I hear him say, well done, uh, thou good and faithful servant. Uh, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Stand on your feet everywhere in reverence to God. 
Hallelujah. You're Alpha and Omega. We worship you, O oh Lord. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And as we are singing this song, I pray that if God prick your heart to cry out for salvation, that you can know that it is in the house right now. And that you could receive him as your savior, your friend, your compassionate deliverer. You are Alpha and, and Omega. We to God if there's someone here today that would say Pastor Cox I heard that sermon and I would love for you to pray for me that I will have that experience that our brother Xander had I would have that experience amen that many in this crowd have I want the Lord to be Lord of my life I want him to be my savior my redeemer my best friend I want to invite him into my heart if you could just indicate by the raising of your hand I'm not calling anybody forward I'm not looking to embarrass anybody because it's not anything embarrassing here. It is changing your life. Amen for eternity. Just indicate by the raising of your hand. I see that hand. Amen. I'll be praying for you in a minute. Amen. I see that hand. I'll be praying for you in a minute. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Any others? Amen. That says, I want God in my life. I know that there's some situations I can't get out on my own. And I need somebody who can work a miracle. He's a miracle working God. Is there another? Amen that say pray for me pastor I want God in my life I, I need to know that when I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death that I don't have to fear evil because he's with me amen when my back is against the wall he's with me is there another amen oh praise God amen is there another amen he says I see that hand in the back if you're ashamed to confess me before men he says I'll be ashamed to confess you before my father and the holy angels but as many as receive him he says to them will I give power to become sons of God. You want to be a son of God today, you can receive him today. You can receive him tonight. Amen. It's a simple thing. It's saying, Lord, I'm inviting you into my life. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every step that I take, every moment that I'm away, I want you to have your way in me. Father, we thank you for those hands. You're a compassionate Savior. 
Oh, you are a lover beyond lovers. You know us, yet you love us. And what's good about your love is your love is transformative because it is the love of God. Hallelujah. It is the love of God. God is love that nailed you to the cross. And because you were nailed to the cross, uh, you have the ability to forgive sin. So God, those hands that were raised tonight, we pray that you would wash them from the very crown of the head to the sole of their feet. God, we pray that you would renew a right spirit within them and cause the bones that are broken to rejoice. You say, any man in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I pray that you would stamp your image upon them. Let hell know that they belong to you. Uh, let the devil know that he have no, no dominion over them uh, because they belong to you. Uh, and God, I pray that when they come to this journey, uh, and that a brother Xander has come to, that they would have known God. Uh, hallelujah. That when they're absent from this body, that they're present with you, Lord. Uh, glory to God. We thank you for that lively hope that you've given us. Uh, hallelujah. That we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Uh, thank you, God, for the hope. Uh, that goes beyond the grave. Uh, thank you, God, for the realization uh, that life, hallelujah, uh, life in this world can be eternal life uh, because we are just exchanging. Uh, so we thank you for this service. We thank you for this funeral. We thank you for this testimony of a life uh, that was given to you and committed to you. Uh, we thank you for this cloud of witnesses uh, that are standing here today uh, saying that, yes, I believe. Uh, yes, I stand with Brother Zander. Uh, yes, I am keeping the faith. I'm going to keep my light trim. I'm going to keep it burning. I'm going to let my light shine before men that they would see my good works uh, and be led to glorify my father which is in heaven. Uh, and these two sons that testified that he was a man of men to them. I pray that they would realize that Jesus makes the difference. I pray that they would realize what caused him to be outstanding. It wasn't his height. It wasn't his resources. It wasn't his big voice. But it was the fact that he allowed Jesus to come into his heart. And God, I pray that before time changed to eternity, that these two young men would give you a place in their heart. I pray for these daughters. Glory to God. Three lovely daughters. Glory to God. I pray. He loves them with all his heart. I pray that they would continue to solidify a relationship with Jesus Christ. I pray that his wife would continue to mark the perfect man and set her affection on things above the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of the extended family we pray for, grandsons, and God, we pray that you would strengthen them in this time of great loss. And God, we know that tomorrow will be, a, will, be, will be a telling time for them. And I pray, God, that you would hold them up, that you would undergird them as they face the finality of life, that they will never see that face again. But I, I want them to realize that you are closer than a brother. You are closer than a sister. And that you can make up the difference. Strengthen them in the inner man. Give them the grace that's needed. Time is the best healer. Glory to God. And through time, help them to reflect on the good moments, the good memories, the good encounters. And it will give them strength to carry on. For this, we give you thanks. For the Mount Calvary family who's also experiencing the loss, the men's department in the entire church. God, strengthen us. We've been praying for months. Glory to God. We didn't just pray, started praying last week. We've been praying for months. Months and months and months. That God would undergird him, and God did. That God would hold him up, and God did. Hallelujah, somebody. And now we pray for those that are alive, because God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. So we pray for every living soul that's hearing my voice, those that are in this building and those that are streaming live in St. Vincent and Barbados, all over the world, that's streaming live, watching this service. God, we pray for them right now that this will be an awakening moment, that they would reflect on eternity. Where are they going to spend eternity? With whom they are going to spend eternity? Because heaven is real and hell is real. I want to say that again. Heaven is real and hell is real. And that bumper sticker is a lie from the pit ahead. Hell. That good, good, good people go to, go to, go to heaven, but bad boys go where? Yeah, well, there ain't going to be no fun down there. There ain't going to be no party down there. Glory to God. So make your calling and election sure because Jesus is the way. Can I get somebody to shout glory? Glory. 
Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Glory to God. I want to turn this portion of the service into the hands of the funeral director at this time. Amen. And they will, they will take over. Amen. The Lord bless you. You gentlemen look good. Thank you. Amen. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. Oh, from you are all things, and to you all Praise the Lord. On behalf of the Harmony Funeral Home, I would like to give our deepest sympathy and heartfelt condolences to the family. And to the friends, I'm sure that the family will thank you at a later date for your cards, your remarks, but most of all for your presence here today. The Mount Calvary Church, I would like to thank you for opening up your doors. I'd like to thank Pastor and all of the clergy. Amen. I'd like to thank the soloists, the musicians, and the gatekeepers. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Tell them about tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will be leaving the church. We will be gathering at the church at 9 a.m. sharp to leave for a 10 a.m. departure to Rose Hill Cemetery, located in Linden, New Jersey. And then there will be a repass directly after the cemetery at 1164 Dean Street. No? It's tonight. Oh, tonight. Yes. I'm sorry. The repast will be tonight so you can break bread with the family at 1164 Dean Street. Right. Thank you. Amen. I'm just going to ask as you come up and walk, there's a little step down here. I don't want anyone to trip. All right? Right by the column. Be careful as you're walking now. Amen.
Um, excuse me, there's a... Excuse me, um, there is a gray Nissan Sentra blocking someone and they need to move, please. A gray Nissan.